our SAP system is up and running, let's install SAP GUI. So the one we downloaded from SAP, let's give that a shot and see if it works for us. Let's right click on the ABAP SAP GUI. Okay, so it's letting us know that the system does not fulfill the prereqs. Let's click OK. And if this message pops up, just go ahead and close out. And we'll download another version of the GUI, which we've supplied for you. Sometimes SAP can host glitchy files that aren't really up to date or patched. All right, so that file has downloaded. We're just going to get rid of the file that did not work for us. And we'll right click on the SAP GUI 730 installer. Run as an admin. Looks like it's opening up minimized. All righty. So this GUI, in addition to installing the SAP GUI, is also going to install Business Explorer, which is the tool set that allows you to tap into the BW system and execute queries using Microsoft Excel as the back end. So just check this top box and it's going to install all of the lower items in the tree. Click on next. Okay, so now that our GUI has been installed, we'll close out of these windows here. And let's open it up and configure our connection to our system. All right, so we're creating a new connection. Click next. And we're going to be calling this system NSP local. And you can put anything in this particular field. It's just the way that you would reference the connection. So it, you could even name it yourself or sandbox, that's fine. The next field is very important. This is where we put in the, whether it be an IP address or local host, because we're running on our machine, we don't need to put a foreign IP address. But if you were to connect to a friend system that's a public IP, you would type that in here. But we're just using ours locally, so localhost. The instance number is 00, and the system ID is NSP. And we configured this during the installation process. We don't need to fill in the SAP router string. That's for the Macintosh version of SAP GUI. So click finish and then we'll double click on NSP local and see if we can get connected. Uh oh, it looks like our system might not be available right now. Let's hit no, we don't really care about the error description. We'll load up our SAP management console. And just as I suspected, it's currently offline. So let's start it up. Okay, our system is up and running. We'll go back to the SAP logon and double click on our connection. And there we go. We're actually connected to our SAP system. So now we're going to be logging in as user DDIC. And our password is going to be the master password that we set during the initial installation of our SAP system. So that's the one I told you to write down. Hopefully you did. And because this is a brand new installation, we can see in the bottom left, it's rendering all the programs that SAP uses to run. 
it's sort of waking the system up. So next time when we log in, it won't be running through all these different tasks. Okay, so now that our system has woken up, we're going to log out. And we'll reconnect. But this time, instead of going to client 000, we're going to client 001, which is going to be our BW system. We'll use the same user, DDIC, and the password, again, the same master password. Now let's create a brand new user that we're going to be using to log into our BW system. Go to transaction SU01. Press enter. And let's call this guy NW user. And then press the uh, piece of paper up here, which will create that user. Assign the user a first and last name. Just call on my guy, John Doe, and then hop over to the Profiles tab. Now we're going to assign our user two different profiles to give it super access in our system. So you could pretty much do anything. So click on this little box. and type in SAP underscore all. Check that box and press the green check. And next we're going to be adding another profile and that one's gonna be SAP new. Again, green check. All right, now let's go over to the log on data. We need to give this guy a password, otherwise he can't log into our system. So for my new password, I'm just gonna be initial one, two, three. You can put anything you want here, but please do keep in mind that once this user logs in, it's going to be prompting you to change the password. So don't make it something that you're going to wanna keep for a while, it's only temporary. Okay, so now we set our initial password. Again, mine's just initial one, two, three, because I know it works. And now we have to set a validity period for our user. And we'll say this user could log in as of yesterday. And let's say the, until the end of March of 2016, we'll say. I'm gonna go ahead and check this user. saying the entered password is not downward compatible. Okay, since just a warning, we'll go ahead and proceed. Click on save. All right, so our user, NW user has been created. All right, so let's log out and log in as our new NW user. And again, the password is going to be what we just set. Mine's initial one, two, three. And immediately we're prompted to assign a new password. And SAP is reminding us that the license is set to expire in 90 days. And we'll talk about how to renew your license before the expiration takes place. So you can always have your trial system up and running. All right, so now we need to go to transaction BD54.
And what we're doing here is assigning the logical connection to a table that's basically going to say this is the BW system and this is the non BW system. So click new entries and let's call this NSP CLNT001 and we'll call it my BI system. Go ahead and hit save. We're being prompted for a transport request. So let's just create a new one. Click on new. We'll call this my BI connection. Click save. And the green check to continue. Now that we just finished creating our transport, Let's go to transaction SCC4 and I'm putting the forward slash N in order to create a new transaction window. And now we need to update this table and we need to assign our logical system under the client 001. So let's click on change mode. And then we'll highlight this particular row 001 and click on this details button. We'll click on the logical system, hit the drop down, and we'll choose the My BI system that we just set up. We'll change our currency, since I'm based in the US, to USD. And I'll save. Okay, okay. Now let's go into transaction RSA1 to activate our BW system. And this is going to be running all the programs that are relevant to BW and bring it to life. If you happen to get this connection failure message, simply go into transaction SEC S T O R E. Click on the green check and remove these two red requests. Delete, continue, choose all. The next step is to go to transaction SE 37. and run the function RFC underscore ping. So type in N-O-N-E and then click execute. And the last step to fix this issue is to go into transaction SE38 and run the program RS underscore TT underscore cleanup underscore SECSTORE. We'll execute this program.
And the last step is to go to transaction RSA1. And if you're greeted with this screen, with the replicate metadata question mark upon entering RSA1, go ahead and hit replicate as well. Just gonna pause the video while this is loading. Now being prompted for please choose one or more source systems. Okay, the BI system is going to be our source system at this point in time. So now we're greeted with this message that says BI TCO activation has been scheduled. And this is basically saying it's running a job in the background. So it's not going to be taking up any, you know, real estate on our screen. It's just running in the back of the system and it's activating the BI content, which we go into more detail about what BI content is in our training. It's essentially stock objects that SAP provides to you. So you can quickly get developing right out the gate and they could be used as templates for your future project work as well. After a minute or so, we're going to see this screen. We'll just check the do not show again box and no, we do not want to see the initial data warehousing workbench documentation. Click no. And at this point in time, we have a working SAP VW system. You can pat yourself on the back. And before we close out today, let's go ahead and create a new source system to load in our files for the training course. Click on source systems. Under file, right click and choose create. And we'll call this source system Z flat file. And we'll give it a description of just flat file. Click continue. And now if we drill into our source system, we can create our data source to bring in data from outside of BW into BW. In the BW310 training course offered at sapbwtraining.net, we use a flat file with beer related data. So I just downloaded the flat file now, beerdata.csv. So in one of our lessons, we're using beer related data and I'm going to create a new data source and this is the starting point. And this is going to contain transaction data. We'll locate the file. Ignore the first header row because there is a header row and change it to be a CSV format. And it's a comma, not a semicolon. Click on proposal, load example data. And we are officially talking to files that are outside of BW and pulling them in. And to learn more, Go ahead and sign up for our BW310 training and become a BW expert today. Thank you for watching.